This attraction is going to be called Bolt and there's been a lot of artwork and videos and concepts posted online so I know pretty much about what it is and I have to tell you my professional opinion says it is Sunday, June 14th, 2020 and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time we're going to talk about three exciting new cruise adventures that you can book in 2021. I'm totally crucified for this video. I've got my, it was a sea day and we were adults and things just happen sometimes shirt on, which you can get at my Teespring store as well as the, I didn't get to go on my cruise, but I still gained 15 pounds. Thanks Corona shirt. That design is also available as a tank top, a long sleeve, a tote bag and telephone case. So if you need any of those things and you want to help support the very unofficial travel guides, check it out. And this hat I also got while we were cruising on the Disney Dream on Castaway Key. By the way, at the moment without a hat, I look like this again. Can I wear my hair like this for a video? I did get it cut once since uh, we can go outside again and I tried a new style and it's just not working. So time to go back for another snip snip. As I mentioned in last week's Sunday Sofa Time and as a lot of you have been writing in the comments to that and on Facebook, it might not be a good time to book a cruise before the end of this year and I am planning uh, one for January now. Not talking about that cruise yet. We still haven't solidified our uh, choices yet. However, I was doing some research and looking at, you know, just like new things that are happening soon in the world of cruising. And I came up with three that I wanted to pick out and specifically talk about today with you all. And they're gonna go from fancy to fun. By the way, you guys know I live in Germany, right? And I speak German and fancy, there's no proper German word that means exactly the same thing as fancy. And nowadays here in Germany, people just say the English word fancy when they want to mean fancy. Isn't that fancy? As most of you know, things have been a little bit crazy with the cruise industry and the travel industry all together throughout this year because of the <laughs> Still not saying it. Many ships that were supposed to be launched this year have been pushed back or rescheduled. And I'm just gonna say it again. I think if you want to be really sure that you can book a cruise that you're not gonna have to reschedule or cancel, it's probably the best bet to start looking in 2021. One of the new ships that is supposed to start cruising this year, we'll see if it happens or not, is something like totally brand new. And that is the very first ship from the Ritz-Carlton hotel brand. Did you know about this? Ritz-Carlton is of course one of the fanciest, here we are again, hotel chains in the world. I think anybody who's done any amount of traveling and been to any big cities knows that the Ritz-Carlton is like expensive, high class, known for luxury, known for service. And they're not like super eights, you know, there isn't a Ritz-Carlton in every city in the world. They're only in certain specific large cities. And for whatever reason, they've decided to build a cruise ship. And actually they're not marketing it as a cruise ship. It's being called a yacht. And if you look at these pictures of it from the Ritz-Carlton yacht website, you'll see that it does look a little bit less like, you know, the oasis of the seas and a little bit more like the luxury yachts you see in the Miami or the Monte Carlo Harbor. And the one really special exciting feature about this ship, this yacht, what is it called again? Evrima. Is it Evrima or is it Evrima or is it Evrima? What is that backwards? Um, Amirv. That wasn't as exciting as I thought. And actually, as I'm looking at the information here, this is I got from cruiseline.com. It says that their first official voyage will now be April 22nd in 2021. So it looks like it won't be launching this year. So one experience that this ship offers that almost no other cruise ship can offer you is you can literally go swimming in the ocean off the back of the ship. The information that is listed here is it, it offers access to non-motorized water sports while anchored. So I don't think that you can like jump off the back of the ship while you're cruising along. Well, I mean you can, 
but you shouldn't. That usually doesn't end well. I'm assuming what they mean is when this ship is tendered in a port that that back area of the yacht will be opened up and you can see from the artwork that it's like a beautiful sun deck and you can just jump off and take a swim or hop in a kayak or a canoe. It's something really special and I probably will never do it for two reasons. First one being, I can't afford a cruise on this ship. I was just looking through the website a little bit and I think the cheapest one I saw started at $5,500 for six nights. That being said, every cabin on the ship is a suite. So it does, you know, it's a little bit more that you get for that. But the second reason is the thought of jumping into water where below me is darkness scares the sh out of me. So even if I did cruise on the ship, I wouldn't be doing it. I might get in a canoe though. The next ship that I wanna talk about that people have been talking about for a long time is the Carnival Mardi Gras. In January of this year, we took our very first cruise with Carnival and we're so much more than pleasantly surprised. I can't believe we waited so long to cruise with Carnival and to everybody who wrote to me for all the years saying that I should try it and I was like, no. I apologize again, you were right, we had a great time and I will recommend and definitely cruise with Carnival again. And maybe I will cruise with the Carnival Mardi Gras. It's supposed to launch in November of 2020. Let's see if that happens and the one feature that makes this ship so unique is it will be literally the only cruise ship in the world. Wait, I keep forgetting to do it. The only cruise ship in the world with a roller coaster on board. This attraction is going to be called Bolt and there's been a lot of artwork and videos and concepts posted online. So I know pretty much about what it is and I have to tell you my professional opinion says this is not really a roller coaster. In my book, and I know if you ask a lot of experts and look at what a lot of like roller coaster fan club websites say, a true roller coaster has to have a moment where it coasts on gravity upwards and downwards. The Bolt roller coaster, I would describe as a high speed powered monorail ride. I mean, if you look at it, that's basically what it is. Because of the way that uh, cruise ships work and because they're not always at the same angle and because of ever changing wind and weather conditions out at sea, I don't think that you could really build a real roller coaster on, the, on a cruise ship ever. Like one where you're taken by a chain lift up to the top and from the highest point you coast back to the beginning or you're accelerated using all the different techniques that they use nowadays to do that. But after some point, gravity takes over and you coast back to the station. And the Bolt roller coaster is also not like that. It is a controlled, electricity-driven thrill ride. It's still gonna be really fun and I still definitely wanna try it. I'm just saying it's not really a roller coaster. One thing that I'm really interested in seeing is just how they set up the, the boarding for this. I can't imagine that they're just gonna let people wait in line for it because I think the lines are gonna be huge. This is an extremely low capacity attraction and the time it's gonna take to get the people into these cars and get the safety, you know, whatever it's gonna be, if it's gonna be a lap bar or a seat belt or maybe both or some other kind of harness and have them go out on the stretch of track, it's just, it's gonna take a long time. And I imagine if they just like open it up and say, stand in line and then ride it, that it's gonna be long lines. So like I said, I'm interested to see if they set up some kind of fast pass or appointment system for this. And I would really like to experience it for myself someday. And I know some of you have said that you have cruises booked on the Mardi Gras. Please remind me who you are in the comments below. Okay, moving on to the third uh, experience, the third new thing that's gonna be available in 2021 on a very exciting ship, something that I, that is like, would make my day if I was on this ship. Uh, and I'm gonna tell you about it right after this little commercial break. Please tell me you saw a little commercial there. Things are starting to look up, so I'm happy about that. All right, to be clear, the ships that I've talked about, those past two, and then this final one I'm gonna talk about and the feature on it that I'm very excited about, those aren't the only new ships. There are a lot of new ships that are coming out later 
this year in 2020 or early in 2021. These are just three that had certain features that sort of sparked my interest that I wanted to talk to you about. And the final one is the Royal Caribbean Odyssey of the Seas. The Odyssey of the Seas. Sounds like a book we had to read in history class. At the moment, the launch date for this ship just says fall 2020, so you know, that could mean anything. And it is qualified as a quantum ultra class. So I've cruised with the Anthem of the Seas, and that is a quantum class ship, meaning they're all sort of clones of each other with only slight differences. And this is a quantum ultra class, which means it's just a little bit bigger, I guess, and they have a little bit more space. So you know it's gonna be an amazing ship. And not only does it have everything that I loved about the cruise that I was on, including the bumper cars, including the iFly skydiving simulator, including the really cool multi-use theater kind of space 270 at the back of the ship. Not only does it have all that, but they're also advertising a poolside taco bar. I'm sold. When can I cruise? And you know where you'll find me on board. One of my favorite, well, you know what? I'm not, I don't even need to call it one of my favorite. Definitely my favorite dining experience on any cruise I've ever been on was the Blue Iguana Cantina on the Carnival Sunrise. And you guys know how seldom I pick a favorite anything. That doesn't mean that I think it's the best. It's just the one that I liked the most. And I have to say, I haven't had the best Mexican food on Royal Caribbean, except for their room service. That was good. And I'm just happy to see that they've announced that they're gonna have an El Loco Cantina on the Odyssey of the Seas, and it's gonna be a poolside experience just like the Blue Iguana is on the Carnival Sunrise. In fact, I think just about every Carnival ship has the Blue Iguana. It's like part of their brand. So, you know, once again, Royal Caribbean listened to me and they're starting to put more Mexican uh, restaurants on their ships. They listened to me a couple years ago when they started to put more water slides on their ships. What should I wish for next? What do you guys think of these three things? Uh, would you, you know what? Let, let me know in the comments below which of these three things you feel like for you is the most attractive feature. Is it the like jump into the ocean feature of the Ritz Carlton yacht? Is it the bold roller coaster on the Carnival Mardi Gras? Or is it the new poolside Mexican cantina on the Royal Caribbean Odyssey of the Seas? And now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, we talked about how I'm starting to plan our next cruise, but for 2021, and then if things get better quicker, that I probably will cruise before then. And these comments are about that video. First one from Scott Nelson. Scott writes, working at Disney World, I would never sail on a Disney cruise. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm sure it's quite good. And being a huge Disney fan, I would probably love it. But working 60 hours a week at Disney World, when I go on vacation, the last place I wanna be is anything Disney. I get it. I love my carnival ships and will stick to them. Oh, and by the way, I'm planning and booking my February 2022 cruise. I just never understand how anybody can plan that far in the future, but I know that it's a great way to save money and have something to look forward to. By the way, I asked Scott if uh, Walt Disney World cast members get a discount on Disney Cruise Line, and this is what he wrote. Yes, discounts are available, however, they are not that great. To get the good discounts, you have to be able to leave at a moment's notice, meaning within the week, provided you can get the time off at the last minute after the schedule was posted and pay in full at the time of booking. Tricky. Next comment is from Ruth Campisi. Ruth writes, it threw in a six minute commercial. Needless to say, when I saw how long it was, I skipped it. Sorry. Well, Ruth, don't be sorry. <laughs> this has been something that a lot of people have been writing about because I've been mentioning how poorly the AdSense function has been working at YouTube lately, that so many of my viewers are not seeing any ads and that has a very negative effect on the way the channel works. And like I said, it's going slowly back in the right direction, but y'all don't have to watch the entire ad. If an ad shows up, that's already great. And if it's a six minute video, you don't have to watch the whole thing. Just, you know, let it run for a couple seconds and then click it away. And thank you. Final comment is from Santiago31Spa. Santiago writes, I am so glad that you are returning to Royal Caribbean. 
I've booked a cruise in January 2021 too, aboard the new Odyssey of the Seas. Congratulations. For me, Royal Caribbean is the best. I enjoy the variety of activities that they have on their ships and I expect to try the iFly experience. I can highly recommend it. It is one of the most amazing things that I've ever done on any cruise ship. And when you consider that it's included in the price of the cruise, why not? I made a whole video about the experience so you can look for that in my library as well. Coming up on the channel in the next few weeks are gonna be more videos of our road trip across uh, Europe here from home down to uh, Midwestern Germany over to the Netherlands and back home. You're gonna see more of the amazing Fantasia land and the pretty cool Toverland theme parks. And when all that's over, I'm gonna be posting videos from our Disney trip back in January. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I look forward to seeing you here next week. Uh, bye bye